Hi guys and welcome or welcome back to the Ultimate Decades Challenge Berry Star. We're currently in the year 1326 and we're currently at the Fairfield household with Viola. Now for some background, the Fairfields have been responsible for a lot of chaos recently. They are super religious and they are part of a group that has been going after witches and killing them. Now this group did originate in France and they were responsible for the death of Viola's father and caused her mother to have to flee to England. And now that they're in England, they have also been responsible for the death of Viola's daughter, Titania, who they drowned. And Titania was a spellcaster, as is Viola. And from our main household, they also murdered Clementine's parents. Clementine is the wife of our now dead founder. And they also kidnapped and tortured Clementine's little brother. So they have just been responsible for a lot of chaos. Now Viola basically told Clementine, just don't worry about it at this point. I'm going to take care of it. And that is what she's here to do today. She is here to exact her revenge on these people that have just caused absolute chaos and disarray for her family, for her friend's family. And Viola just wants her revenge so badly. And as a spellcaster, you know, Viola has some tricks up her sleeve. So Viola found the Fairfields and she's going to cast a little bit of magic and basically start a fire. And Viola is now leaving and both Otto and Gaia are on fire and hopefully are going to burn to death because honestly at this point they deserve it. They have just caused so much horror and terror in people's lives. And I gotta tell you, this is one death that I am not sad about. I don't know why Viola is freaking out, but she has made a very smart decision to get out of that household. And I really hope they suffer the way that they've made other people suffer because I just have no sympathy for them. I think we can all agree it's kind of funny watching them struggle. Goodbye. It was nice knowing you guys. You played an interesting role in the series, but it's time for you to go. This is why you do not mess with a witch. So now that Otto and Gaia are dead, their estate basically goes to their son, Frederick. Here we have the Grim Reaper. I'm just gonna let him take care of them. Okay, so it seems Frederick is outside with Viola freaking out about the fire. I love that look on his face. Oh my gosh. Frederick wasn't aware of what was going on, but he's also not a great person. So Viola did make the decision not to kill him because, you know, she's really only going after the people that are responsible for the murders. So Frederick has basically inherited this huge estate right now, this huge house. So I'm like, as upset as you are, Frederick, you can't be that mad because he did get something pretty good out of it. Now, as far as Frederick knows, his parents just happened to catch fire from this fireplace. I think he just thinks Viola is like a random passerby who he just saw happened to be standing outside the house. Viola, stop giving yourself away. Don't go in. Go over here. And you know, at least they don't have to worry about Otto and Gaia coming after them and exacting their revenge. Otto Fairfield has died and their portion of the household funds has been given to their children. So Frederick has officially inherited this entire huge estate and he doesn't look that happy about it. I think he really did love his parents so that was really hard on Viola. She's definitely not normally the type to kill but I think in this instance it was definitely warranted. So she's gonna head back home now and look after her remaining children and make sure to kiss them goodnight because I think she's just grateful that it's one less threat that her family has to worry about. Now you might be wondering where has Sybil been in all of this? Well Sybil has actually fled to Scotland. She took Clementine advice and her money and she has left the Fairfield family to flee to Scotland because honestly it was just too much for her being involved with a family that could do such horrible horrendous things. So thankfully she and her children are safe and Sybil's not entirely alone. I don't know if you guys remember her cousin Matilda but Matilda is also living in Scotland with her husband so at least Sybil has some family nearby that she can go to for advice and help. And so the reason that we are in Scotland at the moment is it's actually Sybil's youngest son Everard's birthday and he is becoming a toddler so we're gonna do our death rolls together and hopefully Everard manages to age up successfully. Oh my gosh and it's the fall harvest today. We will worry about that when we get back to the main household. <laughs> okay so we're gonna do our death rolls for Everard together and so he's aging into a toddler so we're gonna roll our d20 and little baby Everard thankfully gets to age up successfully. I don't think Sybil could deal with losing him right now. She's just lost enough already. So now we get to do the fun job 
of Rolling for Everard's genetics and hopefully you guys remember that I have created a new genetic system which is a little bit more complex and hopefully will lead to a bit more variety. But we're going to start with his hair so we're rolling a d12 and we are rolling a 1 which means he gets his maternal grandmother's hair which is actually the same as his father's hair. And she has the same eye colour as her hair so he's getting the dark green eyes and I think that's the same as his father has. So I mean the good thing about this system is it's not too much genetic variety but it is a little bit extra. So I'm just going to finish his makeover. And so here we have little baby Everard Fairfield. He's looking so cute. Actually, I think I made his hair and eyes a little bit dark. It's that green. Okay, there we go. That is Everard. <laughs> now it's technically Sybil's birthday tomorrow and it's technically Viola's birthday today, but I'm just going to swap them around because I think it just makes it a little bit easier um, since we're already in the respective households on those days. So we're also going to do our death roll for Sybil to become a young adult. And we're going to about die, so rolling for a young adult. This is a really dangerous roll. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? She's literally just fled. <laughs> literally just fled England to come to Scotland. I built them this whole little house that they could actually afford and now Sybil hasn't made it. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Well, it seems that Sybil passes away. How are we going to do this? Well, obviously she's fled England to stay away from that family and Frederick doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know if his wife has died in the same fire his parents have died in and his children. He doesn't know if they've left. He, he doesn't know what's going on and they're so far away that he's not going to know about the death of his wife so I think that the children are gonna go to Matilda and her husband to raise since they are already in Scotland they know that Sybil's here and they've basically taken responsibility for the family but I feel so bad <laughs> I can't believe this happened to both Alaric and Sybil. I'm sorry, I'm just having a moment. I'm just having a really upset kind of moment. Okay guys, I'm gonna do, do the household transition before I kill off Sybil, I guess. Okay, so here's Matilda and I've just gotten her to adopt the children and so Sybil's in the household by herself and unfortunately she dies, guys. I can't believe it. And her children have to watch her. This was not part of my plan. I am horrified. I feel like we've been losing some really big players recently. I don't know where the children disappeared off to, but hopefully somewhere that they don't have to watch their mother die in front of their eyes. I'm so sorry, Sybil. Oh my gosh. Why does everyone keep dying? I'm not like mentally prepared for all of this. The Fairfields are fine. I honestly don't mind that, but Sybil, Sybil is just breaking my heart over here. Look at this cute little farm I built for them. Like, this was not meant to happen. <laughs> okay, at least we can see that the toddlers are okay in the Brothai household. That is the family that Matilda is married into. I'm just going to bring her here. And as you can see, Matilda has plenty of her own children. So these kids are going to grow up around a lot of siblings. And Matilda is definitely going to let them know about their mother. And maybe they'll come back to England one day. I don't really follow the Brothai household with you guys. So you probably won't see them for a while. But I, I would like to bring them back when they're a little bit older, honestly. I love seeing like what's happened with the family and sharing that with you guys but I'm gonna leave them alone now because they need to get settled in and we've got a little bit more to do today before we head back to the main household and so the other thing we have going on today is Edith is giving birth to another child Edith's parents were the ones who just died and she's obviously married to the King Edward of England so she's really upset but hopefully this child will distract her from losing her family and Edith's actually a really nice sim she's got she's got the good trait she's got the creative trait okay they just had a baby girl so wait let me just figure out what to name her okay so we're gonna call the baby girl louise out of that whole fairfield family i feel like edith is probably the one that i do have em the most empathy for okay so now we're gonna do our death rolls to see if mother and baby live through this okay we're gonna start with edith roll a d20 and we're rolling a 15 she is fine i swear i've had so many sims give birth and not a single one has died of pregnancy complications thus far so <laughs> i don't know what's going on with that but let's roll for little baby louise and little baby louise does not make it she doesn't make it i'm so sorry edith has lost a lot of family members this year bye bye louise i do genuinely feel bad for edith but we're gonna leave her and we're gonna head back to our main household now so here we are at the main household i think clementine's feeling pretty happy about the fairfields dying but she has received news of sybil dying and she's pretty upset about that she's got the mourning from losing a good friend buff 
And just as you thought all the aging up was over, not quite yet because today we have Isaac is aging up into a teenager and we also have the triplets aging up into children. So first we're going to start off with Isaac who is aging into a teenager so he just can't roll a 7. And Isaac is fine. Isaac gets to age up totally successfully. Come down my friend. It is all safe. You have no witch hunters after you or your family, finally, and you get to age up successfully. You should be feeling pretty good at the moment. So here we have Isaac with his makeover, and I'm not gonna lie, I feel like he's looking pretty fine considering he was locked in a torture dungeon for like the first half of his life. And so for the triplets, I'm just gonna roll for them all at once and then I'll worry about aging them up and doing the makeovers. So they're all aging up to children and first we're going to start with little Caspian here and he is successful. Thank goodness. Now for Godfrey. Where are you Godfrey? Godfrey is here and he is rolling a one so he is also successful and now we have little Ulysses the second. Come on, three for three. And he is also successful. So we've got all the little toddlers aging up successfully. All three boys are absolutely fine. And so here we have Caspian. Here we have Godfrey. And then here we have Ulysses II. I'm so happy that all the boys aged up successfully because we really deserve it after what we've gone through with Sybil and Alaric recently. Okay, I ended up changing up Isaac's looks because he looked really similar to someone else. So this is what he looks like. He's so handsome. And all the boys have aged up successfully. I'm so happy that we haven't had to deal with another death this year because that would just... My heart's already broken a little bit. We don't need to break it anymore. So we're also going to do Isaac's marriage roles. Now I was thinking that I might just do the marriage roles of all of the children and then in the future just do the marriage roles when they're children just so I know for the future who I could potentially match them up with. So instead of going around to all the households I'm just going to put their pictures up on the screen as we do the marriage roles and we're going to do all of this together. So just so you guys know if they roll between a 1 to 3 they never get married if they roll between a 4 to 20 they do get to get married. So we're going to start off with Isaac and he is rolling a 20 so he does indeed get to get married. So now we're going to roll for all the boys and as the current heir Caspian automatically gets to get married so we're just gonna roll for Godfrey and Ulysses. So Godfrey is getting an 8 so he does get to get married and now for Ulysses he is rolling a 16 so he also gets to get married and now for the sims we don't currently have on this lot we're gonna roll for Leopold the second and he does get married he rolls an 11 and now we're gonna roll for Juliet Hawthorne and she does not get to get married. Are you kidding me? I was gonna get her married to Isaac, but I guess that is not happening. And now we're also gonna roll for Hippolyta and she does get to get married. Okay, I'm a little bit butthurt about Juliet not getting to get married because she's so pretty and I just feel like she would have had the loveliest genetics. But oh well. Okay, so it is currently full harvest and that means that we finally get to harvest all of the stuff on the farm even though a lot of our crops have already died. So I'm gonna get these guys over here to harvest everything so Clementine come over here Geraldine Grace you can help and now Isaac's a bit older he can also help and I'm just gonna get the boys doing chores we've had a really hard harvest this year but I'm glad we finally got some lemons and some pears because I think I do really need them for the yield cookbook mod okay, so now I've harvested all the crops so I'm just gonna put our fruit and vegetables into the larder and I'm going to move our roses over to where we keep our flowers Okay, even though we lost a lot of our crops because of the crops blight trait, I think a lot of things still survived. So we're going to be okay. Going to move these roses into here. And look, now we can actually cook like a roast turkey. We can cook baked mushrooms. So happy about that. I'm going to bring Grace over here to open up our living business so that we can make a little bit of money because we're running a bit low at the moment. And I might get Isaac to go fishing. I might get all of them to go fishing, actually, all of the boys. I really want to get another cowberry as well. I remember at the start of the challenge we got a cowberry and then we grew it into a cow plant but I sold it because at that point we just didn't have many sims and I didn't want anyone extra dying but now I feel like it'd be really funny to have a cow plant and see if any townies try to like feed it. I think Clementine feels really guilty about Sybil dying because it was her suggestion that Sybil move to Scotland and she saved up the money for it and she was trying to make the right decision and then Sybil just died like as soon as she got there. I ended up deciding that Sybil died of typhoid so it was quite a generic kind of death and Clementine is aware that the children are looked after with Matilda but she still feels like incredibly guilty about the situation. Isaac just looks so dashing. I did not plan for him to look this dashing. I think it's the hair. 
know. I feel like there's just a very like dashing hair and he's got the really good cheekbone as well and kind of like the aquiline nose going on. Like a good strong Roman nose. Okay, here is David Hastings. This is the guy that Grace is going to marry tomorrow. I don't think she has a lot of choice, but I think it just makes the most sense. Like, you know, they're trying to keep their families friends with each other. It's more of a local politics decision. Oh my gosh, Isaac just got a booty doll. I'm going to put it on this table and maybe we can sell it for a bit more of a profit. Okay, I'm getting them to stop fishing and they're going back home because Clementine is preparing them a roast turkey. So they get a really delicious meal tonight. Oh my God, why does Caspian hate Godfrey? He's like really good friends with Ulysses II, but something about Godfrey he just like does not get along with. Look at this, they get a delicious turkey. Our clothes are live in store and they all get to have a delicious turkey for dinner. So even though they're all feeling a little bit sad at the moment, hopefully this will be something to cheer them up a little bit. So we have the whole family eating at the table and then Grace is just over here on her own. <laughs> Way to exclude her. Okay, no, Clementine's going over to sit next to her so they can commiserate together a little bit. Okay, and they're all pretty tired, so I'm just going to send everyone to bed for today. Actually, now that the triplets have aged up, I need to give them, like, actual adult beds. And I can get rid of some of their toys. I'm just going to keep the triplets in here because it's kind of easier than trying to fit some more beds into the actual house. And, you know, it's kind of nice for them as well because this way they get, like, more of their own space. So we're starting off today at the Hawthorne household. I mean, the other Hawthorne household. Today, Viola is aging up into an adult and we also have little baby Hermia over here aging up into a toddler. Now, Viola's twin brother, Sebastian, also just had his age up roll and he didn't make it. So she's already a bit scared about this. So basically, we can roll anything over a nine and she can age up successfully. Are you kidding me? Of course this happens. Of course this happens. This keeps happening, doesn't it? We all keep losing people. I, I'm honestly numb to it at this point. Fine, she can die. I don't even care anymore. I feel like this is just the whole threefold law of magic. It's just like if you do something bad to someone else, it comes back and it hits you. At least she gets to be with Lucian now. So Tybalt is officially taking over the family farm. And as such, he's going to have to get married really soon as well. I think I have someone for Tybalt, but I don't think he's getting married just yet. So the whole family has to deal with the loss of their mother. And now Tybalt has inherited the whole film, a fact which he is not very happy about. I think he much would have rather have his mother, but he's going to have to be the one to do little baby Hermia's age up. So now I get to roll to see whether little Hermia successfully ages up into a toddler. And she's rolling a six, so she does successfully age up. So they only have one death today. At least says that. So here we have little Hermia. It seems that she's not a spellcaster. And we're going to do her genetics rolls together. So first we're going to roll for her hair and she is getting her father's hair. And then now we're also going to roll for her eyes and she is getting her father's eyes as well. I'm pretty sure Lucian had the pink eyes too. So here we have little Hermia as a toddler successfully aged up with pretty much all of Lucian's genetics. But we'll see what she looks like when she gets a bit older. Okay, so I'm going to leave these guys and head back to the main household and hopefully they're going to be okay without their mother and Tybalt's going to have to step up and really take care of them. So we're back at the Hawthorne household and today we have the wedding of Grace who is getting married to David Eads, I believe. David Hastings. Grace is getting married to David Hastings and she's not really feeling that great at the moment but hopefully she's going to feel a bit better once she's faced with her future husband. And I did end up selling the voodoo doll that they caught yesterday so that we have enough money to pay for the wedding and her dowry, which is 500 simoleons. And of course, instead of taking their seats, everyone just gathered up here to watch the wedding. So here go Grace and David down the aisle together, getting married, and Grace is quite excited to sort of step into this new phase in her life. Okay, come back here. I need you guys to like actually do this wedding thing. Grace is like, um, can you like pay attention to me for five seconds? Okay, so instead of having their first kiss in front of the wedding arch, as I'd hoped, they're having it up here. But these guys are officially married and Grace is really happy and excited to, you know, get to become a mistress of her own household. But it's so exciting and everyone's super happy for her. However, we do need to take out some money from her household funds to pay for her dowry. So Grace's dowry is 500 simoleons, so I've just taken that out of her the household's account and now I'm just going to have her move in with her husband's family and we are officially saying goodbye to Grace from our household. 
And I'm not really sure where Geraldine is. I thought she'd want to hug her daughter or something, but it seems that Geraldine has just disappeared. And so everyone's leaving and we're leaving Grace behind. So as today is the first day of winter, I'm just going to get rid of all these crops and then plant some new ones. And also we're going to roll to see what our lot trait for the next season is. I don't know why I keep selling my trees. Like I do want to keep them, but it doesn't let me put them in the inventory. Okay, let's do the roll together to see what our next season's trait will be. And I'm hoping we don't get crops blight again because I'm not going to be very happy. Oh my God, we had great soil. We need to plant a lot of plants then to take advantage of this happy occasion. I am so happy we actually get a good lot trait for once. Gardening just seems to go really well here. I am taking it. So in the winter, we can plant lemons, pears, potatoes, and spinach. Oh god, I should have checked that before I just deleted all my lemon and pear trees. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, well, at least I've got some in the fridge. That was a really dumb move on my part. At least we have pears that I can plant, but um, next time I'm definitely going to check before I go and delete everything. So I'm just going to send everyone to start planting. And I think because we did make quite a bit of money off the trees, maybe I'll just send Clementine to buy some more plants because I wouldn't mind some more pears and also some more spinach to plant and maybe get like a flower that they can also plant over here. I just added some plots over here so we can also grow some some oversized crops this season. So we have five plots. I might just do mushrooms and pumpkins because I feel like those sound kind of wintry. I think lettuce grows in winter as well actually. Maybe I'll do like one of everything except for watermelons because watermelons are definitely a summer fruit. I'll just do one pumpkin. Okay, I'm never giving these guys a coloring book because I really don't think they'd be able to stay inside the lines. Look at this planting. <laughs> that is not organized. They're doing okay with the trees though. Maybe it's because I actually space them out a little bit better when I place them down. Clementine, are you trying to get out of planting all these seeds? Get back here. Geraldine, do what you're told. They're just like trying to escape so they don't have to do all the gardening. You guys are the adults of the household. Come back here. <laughs> you have responsibilities. Stop wandering off. Come on, you guys. This is fun. This is a fun time. We're doing this together. We're having a great time. Okay, it's getting a little bit late and Clementine's very sad, so I might send her off to the market tomorrow. And she's very hungry, so that turkey did not hold up very well. <laughs> So okay, we're gonna compost it. And Clementine, you're gonna have to make something for everyone. Just the cheese and fruit board is fine. You don't have to work yourself too hard. So I just sent the boys out fishing. I was going through their goods. And look at that, we got a cow plant berry. I am going to plant that for sure. I'm actually excited to have a cow plant this season. I might get Isaac to plant it because I feel like he is the most dedicated when it comes to planting things. And also, Isaac, you can finish off planting those two pears. And I'm just gonna fix up these spinaches. They did not do a great job of lining these up. So the garden's looking great, but then Godfrey came over and caused this mess. So that's great, Godfrey. Thank you for that. <laughs> kind of ruined our aesthetic a little bit, but oh well. And little Bluebell is just being a garbage god and rubbing around in the dirt. Delicious. I think we actually have enough money now to buy a Larix portrait as well, because that's going to be a thousand Smolians. And I I think I'm also going to have to make two more portraits, one of Ulysses with Marsilia and their children, and then one more of Alaric with Clementine and their children. But I will do that soon. For now, I just want to start off with a Larix portrait. So there we have a portrait of Alaric that they had commissioned for their house. And as it gets bigger, hopefully we'll have more than just like this one little wall that we can dedicate to our previous heirs. Now everyone's eaten. I'm just going to send them all to bed for tonight. Oh my gosh, it is so dirty up here. So I'll get them to clean up tomorrow. And tonight is the first night that Grace's bed is empty. So I'm sure Geraldine has some feelings about that, but I'm sure Grace is doing just fine over at her new home. Actually, talking about that, I think we have to go over and see how the newlywed couple are doing. So here we have our newlywed couple just laying in bed next to each other and, you know, surrounded by the whole family because... Well, they're in their beds, but privacy is a modern invention and medieval peasants obviously didn't have that option. So we're going to do our rolls to see how many children these guys get to have. So if we roll between a 2 to 10, that basically determines the number of pregnancies. And if we roll a 1, that means that they don't get any pregnancies. So we're going to get our dice together and roll our d10. And so these guys get to have three pregnancies. And you know what? We're going to have them consummate the marriage right now and get started on the first pregnancy. So the marriage is 
consummated, the marriage is official, and in a few days we'll come back and we should have a new little Hastings baby. And you know, obviously, apparently they don't care about people watching, so good for them, I guess. You're a better person than I am. And so today we also have the aging up of baby Philippa, who is Edith and Edward's youngest daughter, and they did lose a newborn daughter earlier this year, so for their sake, hopefully this goes well, but we're aging her up into a toddler today. So let's get up our death rolls. And we're gonna do our toddler roll. And they're rolling a five, so little Philippa is fine. She ages up absolutely perfectly. Here's little Philippa, and we are going to do her genetics rolls together as well. So first we're gonna roll for her hair, and she is getting her father's hair. So she gets that beautiful purple hair. And this is the same hair that her grandmother Amelia had, if you guys remember Amelia. And now we're gonna roll for her eyes, and we are getting her mother's eyes. And so here we have little Philippa aged up successfully. She looks quite a lot like Edward, I think. And Edith is just in love with her little baby girl. And so we're going to leave these guys alone and head back to the main household. Clementine's just like, I refuse to get up. I refuse. I've been having such a hard time lately. Too bad. Up we get. Okay, I'm going to get Clementine dressed. Okay, Clementine's going to get dressed and we're going to send her to the market to buy some more things for our crops because I want to put in some more spinach and some more pears over here. Okay, so here we are at the store. This is Marina's store. They have all these delectable desserts, but Clementine is just got her eyes on the prize, just the produce today. Hopefully we can afford this because last year it was super expensive so we'll see how we go okay the spinach is actually pretty cheap i like that i know the pot pears are going to be expensive but we only need a couple of those and then i also wanted to plant some flowers because i like having flowers in the garden i just feel like it adds a little bit of shizzes okay i don't know if they have flowers here maybe not maybe i can't buy flowers from the store. Okay, well we've got our pears and we've got our spinach and those are the main things that I wanted. And it wasn't even that expensive. I feel like this year's crops are a lot cheaper than last year's and half of ours died last year, whereas like they should do really well this year. Wait, oh my God, tomorrow's Christmas? This is gonna be a very long episode then because I feel like there is a lot going on this episode. I completely forgot about Christmas. Well, all our crops are planted at least. So I think maybe today is gonna be a bit more of a chill day because they're gonna have such a big day tomorrow. That came along very very quickly. So I'm gonna send these guys to bed. I sort of skipped through today because it was kind of boring and I have a feeling it's gonna be a really long video anyway. So I'm just gonna let them eat and then I'm gonna send them to bed and then tomorrow we have a Christmas and it's been quite a while since we've had a Christmas. Last time I think was when Alaric and Sybil were both children and Marsilia was here. So it's a little bit nostalgic getting to go through it again. Now before Christmas can start, Eleanor Valois is having a baby, another one, and this is her second to last pregnancy. So. She's only got one more after this. And they only have two children so far, which is okay because I think they'll be all right for an heir, but it never hurts to have more. So we have a little baby girl and what are we going to call her? So I think they're going to call her Isabel. Isabel? Little girl Isabel. And so now we're going to roll for Eleanor and Isabel to see whether they get to live successfully through the horrible pain that is childbirth. Let's roll a d20 for Eleanor and we are getting a four and she's fine. And let's roll for little baby Isabel bell and she doesn't make it she doesn't make it <laughs> guys you are not having the best luck the next one's your last one so you really gotta like try hard next time to make sure they survive not a good christmas for eleanor but we're gonna leave these guys now and go and celebrate our own family's christmas and so today is christmas day and we're at the church with the one and only alistair pentland our community priest and he's always the one to host these religious events and we've got a few people freezing to death out here, so I might get Alistair inside to start preaching for everyone. Give a religious speech. Okay guys, please come inside so you don't freeze to death. Apparently it's getting very cold at the moment. So Alistair is very, very passionate about what he does. He loves talking and like spreading the word to all the good people. And I think for once they're actually all listening to him a little bit. Usually everyone's kind of terrible at actually paying attention to what he has to say. I mean, I don't know how much these guys care about what Alistair has to say, but it is Christmas so this is kind of part of the ceremony. Okay Peter you are not paying attention right now you're like too busy talking to your daughter. That is so rude. Look how old Peter looks 
now do you guys remember when he was a child and we adopted him and now he's like all fully grown with like kids of his own crazy okay alistair literally no one's listening to your speech we got marina just like sobbing in the background <laughs> alistair's speech didn't inspire anyone Oh no, poor Alistair. Okay, we're gonna get Alistair to do a little bit of praying. He's doing a very inspiring prayer. He's, you know, praying that everyone has a wonderful Christmas and that they're all forgiven for their sins and whatnot and no one's really paying any attention. Cleodine's sobbing over here. What are you wearing, girl? That dress is way too nice for you. Nice try trying to wear, like, your nice wedding clothes. Okay, he wants to give another religious speech. Well, I think they've had a very merry Christmas at the church but I might send them back to the household to have a meal together now. Alistair has done his job and he's done a very interesting job at that. So here we are back at the main household and I've just got Clementine making them a delicious Christmas lunch slash dinner and I may have spent all their money decorating a little bit for Christmas. <laughs> I swear last year we had a snowy Christmas which we don't have this year. Clementine is making a delicious eel pie for everyone which I think is a really weird food but I think they did eat a lot more eel and such back then and like random fish. Okay you guys are not having a very merry Christmas. I want all of you to come in here together. I want you to all sing together except for Clementine because she's cooking. Everyone's so joyous to spend Christmas together. I feel like they're being tortured to be here. Like I feel like they're being held here against their will. I'm just like sing my sweets. Sing my angel of music. They're like, please let us go. Caspian's like, I'll sing. I'll sing, guys. This is why he's the heir, because he's clearly the best character. Okay, well, Clementine has made his eel pie, and Isaac has just gone for it without even waiting for everyone to be seated. Okay, I'm going to put the eel pie up here, and we're going to call everyone to meal. Except for Isaac. Isaac is an absolute gobble guts. Hey, guys, it would be nice if you would all sit down for a delicious Christmas dinner together. I'm trying to get, like, a nice photo of them all together and they all just insist on looking miserable. Come on guys, it's Christmas. You all are meant to be so excited. This is probably not the best Christmas because I think everyone's just like lost people, had a lot of deaths recently. Okay, I might just leave it there for today and let them finish the rest of Christmas because I don't think they really want to celebrate that much. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next year. Bye!